All right. So, which question do you have? Yeah, so 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 here's the thing, uh, and, and it well we're going we're going to just have to struggle with this because so your numbers were like six three and four right, mine are four two and seven. Um, when we do the problems, the way they're structured, the way they're written by the author is through the use of essentially variables. So there's really a a variable when they write this question. There's a variable here. Maybe they maybe they call it. R, and this one is M, and that one's maybe V. And in the background, they say R can be any number between like zero and seven, and then V can be any number between four and twelve. And each person is going to get a new question with different numbers. Does that make sense? Okay, but they're all going to be structured the same way. So you're all, all everybody's number five is going to have a parenthesis, something squared, minus something cubed, parenthesis, divide by something. Does that make sense, everybody? If we need to use your numbers, we can use your numbers, but most of the time I'm just going to use the ones that are, that are generated here. Is that okay with everyone? And if you could do it with the ones that are here, hopefully then you can go back and look at yours and, and revisit yours and work through yours. Okay? So doing this one, one thing about uh, Math Excel as well is that it doesn't let me zoom on the screen kind of the way I want to. Because if I zoom enough, like it, ju it just gets really messy looking and it hides the question. And so there's sometimes I have to do some things to give myself a little bit of room to work. So, okay. What would you do first? Order of operation. You're going to look at the parentheses, right? Okay. That's our order of operations. Now, as I do that, working inside those parentheses, what is the next operation that you have to do, Travis? Exponents. Okay. Um, now, here's the thing. Can I do both those exponents at the same time? Yeah. You don't need to write them down. Like we've been, the, the questions we've been doing uh, in the last couple of days, we've been pretty deliberate with, like, I'm only going to do 16, and I'm going to rewrite this as minus 2 cubed divided by 7, right? All right, so that's a minus, not a – it should be a minus. Um, you don't need to do that if you understand that I can do that one and that one at the same time, okay? Um, okay, so do I still have parentheses, though? Yeah. And I need to work inside those, correct? Okay, so it's 16 minus 8, okay? So 8 – Divided by 7. Okay. Um, now let's see what they tell me in regards to how I've got to type this in. And that's another thing that we need to pay attention to is how they ask you to enter your answer. See how it says type an integer or a simplified fraction? If I take 8 divided by 7, does, that, does 7 go into 8 evenly? No. So I just need to type it in as a fraction. 8 over, oh, yep, I hit the, I hit the enter key too, too fast. It should be that. There you go. 8 divided by 7, and then it will tell me I'm right. Okay. Did it? It accepted it? Okay. So here's the thing. Sometimes there's things in the background that they've written that they accept answers, that even though the directions don't say it. Okay? There's also times where it says write an integer or a simplified fraction. And if I don't type in 8 over 7, it's not going to accept it. Like some of you might have gotten like uh, 1 over 3. So it would be 0 0.333333 forever, right? It's probably not going to accept any version of how you write that. You would have to type in 1 over 3. But if yours terminated, your yours was like 4.4, .4, it accepted that. Um, those directions are going to be critical as we move throughout the year 
type in an integer, which is just 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, it's the whole numbers and their opposites, or a simplified fraction like 8 over 7. Yes? How does the bar today have this small number in the you can do that too, um, but that's then relying on the calculator, and there will be times where your calculator will not take that decimal and change it to a fraction. So it, the hope is that when we see, like, what were your numbers that you you divided? Twenty-nine divided by seven. So do those two numbers have anything in common? Because you, you push this button, you, you push 29 and then the division key and then 7, right? So what that means is exactly that. So you change that, you hit enter, and it gave you that decimal. What decimal to give you? So, and it kept going, right? Okay. And then you hit fraction or math, fraction, enter, and it gave you then what? 29 divided by 7. So you went through this process and really ended up getting what you started with, right? So what, what we need to pay attention to is that, like, when I would have gotten, let's say I get, because these two numbers are relatively prime, meaning they don't share any factors. If I would have gotten, like, 12 over um, 16, my hopes are is that we don't grab our calculator and let our calculator reduce that for us, that we see if, is there a, uh, when I take 12, is there a value of 4 inside there as a factor? So I can cancel, and it, when I cancel a 4 out or divide a 4 out, it would leave me a 3. Divide that by 4 as well, and it leaves me 3 fourths. And that then would be the simplified version. And my hope is that we don't use our calculator to do that, because eventually there will be numbers that we're messing around with that your calculator, even though it does it with that number, maybe it doesn't do it with all values. And that's kind of... Sometimes a problem with the the type of calculator that you were using there. Um, okay, so that was question number five. Any other questions that if I scroll through here that? Oh yeah, there's more. Yeah. Okay, let's, let's do 24. Okay. So this is the one that most, not I'll say most people, but this is the one that had the greatest amount of people missing it, okay, in both classes. And I, I think we counted last period, there, there's at least nine operations that are taking place here, um, which is, is going to be kind of rare for us with the, uh, the things that we do later on, that we have nine operations to be conducted. A lot of times what we'll have is maybe three or four operations that we got to deal with. But if we can do nine and show success with nine, then doing two or three operations, that's just going to be like almost habit, right? It'd be really easy. Um, so what we want to focus on is your parentheses, right? So we've got a, parenthesis, a set of parentheses right there. But is, there. is there anything I can do inside them? No, there's no operations inside, right? So even though those parentheses, they're not the ones we're talking about. I go to the next set of parentheses, and that's the set I'm looking at, right? So I'm going to do that inside these parentheses. So essentially, I just create my own new problem, right? Focusing just on that yellow stuff, okay? So inside that yellow stuff, I'm going to go through, oh, I'm going to go through order of operations again. Well, order of operations start with P. So now I'm going to find the parentheses that are inside the current set of parentheses, right? So that's where I need to focus. That's where I'm going to do my first line of work. So what do I change that to? Negative one. Negative one. So I've got 20 divided by negative 2 squared plus 4. We've got the 3. We've got the minus 7. And now that's going to go to negative 1. And whenever I get a result, I know that I'm going to, basically this says here 
Now you're taking 7 minus 8, and you're going to end up multiplying it by this 7 here, right? Those two things stuck together uh, tells me multiplication. Whenever I get a negative result, I'm always going to leave those parentheses in there, okay, to remind myself that the negative um, is part of the, the next operation. So now I'm going to do order of operations again with that line and starting over at parentheses. So I start over at parentheses, so I'm looking at just this stuff, okay. There's no more parentheses in there that I can do anything, can't do anything inside that set right there. So then I go to exponents, right? So the exponent is this. So that 5 is going to negative 1. So that means, okay, so, so we've got 20 divided by negative 2 squared plus 4. Now, you did a couple steps there together, I think. But that negative 1 to the 5th becomes negative 1, doesn't it? Because negative 1 to the 5th means negative 1. Times negative one, times negative one, times negative one, times negative one, right? So what's one times one times one times one times one? One, but then there's five negatives, so it's a negative, right? Then we've still got this stuff. Still got parentheses. Can I do that multiplication there? When I say Everybody look at Devin. Okay, we got only one Devin in here, right? What if we had three Devins? And I said, everybody look at Devin. Would we have people looking at different people? Yes. Okay. So let's say we had three Devins in here. I said, everybody look at Devin Johnson. Would I have 17 sets of eyes looking at the correct Devin? Yes, right? Does that make sense? So in order, if there's multiple things that have essentially the same name, I need an identifier so we can narrow it down, right? So a first name isn't enough when I have multiple people with that same first name. So I need a last name. Well, when I say everybody look at the seven up here, okay, what if there were multiple sevens? We want to be looking at the right one, right? If I said everybody look at the negative seven, does that focus everybody's attention on that one there? Okay? So when we talk about numbers, guys, we're going to talk about them in a first name, last name kind of idea. You don't just talk about the amount or the value. You talk about the sign as well. So the sign is the first name, and the actual number then, the value is the second name or the last name. Does that make sense? And the reason I say that is because when I want to do these operations here, this is multiplication, right? I want to multiply first name, last name by first name, last name. Okay, so I want to multiply the negative 7 by the negative 1. And what does that give me? What's negative 7 times negative 1? I don't know. Positive 7, right? Okay. What happens a lot is that people see the 7, and they ignore the minus sign out front, and they multiply it by negative 1. And that would give you negative 7, right? So we're supposed to get... 10 eventually inside the set of parentheses. But if you didn't multiply with that negative 7, you would have gotten eventually a negative 4 inside those parentheses instead. Does that kind of make sense? So you have to use the signs that are attached to the numbers when you're doing these problems. All right, so inside those parentheses, we can condense that, right? We can make that 10. Yeah. So now we've got 20 divided by what ends up being... I forgot this negative here, but that's negative 2 squared plus 4, then times 10. Now order of operations tells me to do what next? I've got rid of all parentheses, right? Or all parentheses that matter for us in regards to doing more operations. So now I'm on exponents. What's negative 2 squared? 4. So I have 20 divided by 4 plus then 4 times 10, right? Order of operations says left to right. I need to do that first, right? What's that change to? 5. Now, as we're working through, because I think um, we said this yesterday, that 
some of us are seeing that I can do that and write down five, and at the same time, I can write that down as 40, right? You guys feel comfortable doing that? Okay, that is perfectly fine. Instead of writing down five, and then plus four times ten, and then going back and through and doing the four times ten. But the answer is the end eventually 45. Okay. I am, I am fully aware, guys, that you're going to be in a situation where something makes sense to you, and you're thinking, man, this guy's talking for about one question for like eight minutes, and this is boring. Okay, but there will be somebody in the 17 of us that need me to talk about it like that. Does that make sense? So I don't want to leave anybody in the dust. Okay, so make sure if it, if it makes complete sense to you, just bear with me because down the road, you might be that one person that needs that eight-minute explanation while everybody else is looking at you thinking, come on, man, this is, this is easy stuff. Okay, so I, when I give an explanation, I make sure that we give it, it, it it's, it's full explanation and give it its due credit. Does that make sense? Um, I don't want anybody to be confused about anything. Does that help with that one? Okay, so you want to go back through and see. Okay, yes, so so if you type in on your calculator just this, you get the negative sign and then like it, so it looks like this, right? Or does it actually put the does it actually write it that way? Some some of the calculators are gonna write it that way. Okay, okay. So it's looking like that. And what that does then is it's saying that this power of two is only getting applied to the thing that it is directly behind. So we actually want the negative to be squared as well, right? So we need to tell the calculator that the thing that this 2 is directly behind is that. So it's kind of like putting a block around that thing and squaring the whole thing. Does that make sense? So you, you got to, if you want to square, like, like this one right here, we, have, we just essentially have to type it in that way. Otherwise, it's going to give me negative 4 back instead of the positive 4 that we're interested in. Um, See here. What about? So let me just scroll through here and, and and just say yeah, let's do that one. Or does anybody have specific numbers? Uh, I just... yeah. Oh, you were gonna raise. Is there one you want to see? No. Twenty. This one. Okay, so let's let's do this one then. Um, let's see. All right, so what do you what do you have to do first here? Go ahead. Exponents, good. Okay, um, and here, here's the situation where because that is in parentheses, we need to square the negative, right? So negative five times negative five gives you twenty-five. Good. So five times twenty-five minus fifty divided by what's that going to be? Twenty-five as well. So when you're doing exponents. Um, you can kind of do them all at once if you if you feel comfortable doing that. Okay. So now what's the next step? Lindsay? Multiply the 5 and the 25. So that gives us 125. Minus 50 divided by 25. And now what? Lindsay? Say again. 50 divided by 25. Good. So 125, 50 divided by 25 ends up being 2, right? And then that's going to give us my 123. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, 25 to uh, 
36, 50, You got 36, 32, 4. That's right here. So, so this is this is all right. So you got 216. You got, so this is a 32 divided by negative 4. Yeah. So we have a positive divided by negative. That 8 should be a negative. So it's 216 minus 8 instead of plus 8. Is that why I kept on taking it Yep. Because I, yep. I did it like... <laughs> Not when you actually <laughs> so yeah, so, so it should be that, that the final answer should be two oh eight instead of two twenty four. So it's, it's just that. So understand, guys, when we do uh, multiplication or division, if you are using an odd number of negatives in multiplication or an odd number of negatives in division, the product or quotient will be negative. Does that make sense? If you have an even number of negatives through division or multiplication your result will be positive. All right? And that's just something always to pay, pay attention to and be careful with um, as you move on. Okay? I have another one. I yeah. Think it's the next, I think it's the next one. 21? Yeah, let me look at it. Oh, it's just like the other one? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, so... Oh, another one that I have. There's another one. Say again? Are those things called brackets? Yeah, the square ones? Yeah, um, yep. it says there's a bracket and then a number times and then two numbers and then another bracket and then it's squared. And then minus two. Okay, so. Yeah, it's the end. Not that? Or to the end, like is that it? No. No. Okay. Okay. So if we've got. If we've got uh, going through order of operations, so that's that's our first set of parentheses, right? Okay. But then we got to go through order of oper operations again, and that's going to narrow our focus in on that there, right? So we're going to do that first, which tells us so it's four minus five, right? So we have let me use a different color here. We've got seven. And then times, so that yellow stuff, 4 minus 5, is going to go to negative 1. Now, when I get a result that's negative throughout any operation, I always put parentheses around it, okay, for the fact that there might be something that I've squared or cubed or there might be something else that is important to that negative later on, minus then 18. Is that okay? So that got rid of essentially these yellow parentheses. We still got the blue ones though, right? These brackets are representing what I've got highlighted blue over here. Can I do the math inside there? What's 7 times negative 1? Negative 7. And here's the reason why I want when I get a result, and if it's negative, I want to put parentheses around it. Because there's this power of 2, right? Minus then 18. We need to understand that that would not be the same as negative 7 and then leave my power to minus 18. Does that make sense, everybody? Okay. This is what a lot of people want to write down because, well, I've, I've done the work to get rid of parentheses. But because there's that power of 2 there, it makes sense to keep those parentheses so that we remember that what's being squared here is actually a negative number. So what's negative 7 squared? 49 minus then 18 
And there's the 31 that you're seeing right there. Was that? So eight, negative two, negative two, so negative sixteen, two fifty six. That should be right. Okay. Yep. All right. Um. I'm gonna stop there with with going over the homework questions, guys. I got um a worksheet for you. I want to give you a little bit of time to work on it. Um, <clears throat> with Math Excel, now I've, I've got a lot of textbooks and stuff like that that I can pull from Math Excel and use, but a lot of textbooks have very similar questions in them. So when I want to give assignments that are over the same information, maybe two days, three days in a row, Math Excel is not going to be the tool that I can do that with. So I'll give you uh, alternative assessments through like worksheets and that type of stuff. Okay, um, on a worksheet like this. So here's the thing: I'm going to probably, in some fashion, collect this tomorrow. Okay, and you'll get it back at some point. Um, but I, on these, will want to see your work. Okay, if you're a person that I didn't give enough room here, and you want to do work on notebook paper, by all means, that's fine. Just staple that workbook paper. Uh, to this, okay? Um, but I'm going to collect this, like I said, in some fashion. I might physically take it from you, and then I might grade all 16. I might take it from you, and I might grade five of them, okay? Um, just kind of like a quality control check thing. Does that make sense? Okay? Um, there will be situations that when, when I don't take it from you, but you get into Math Excel, and I can set up a system for you to type your answers in, and it will grade it, and... Um, see if you got the answers right. So there'll be times where I'm looking for work, checking work, um, and then times where I'm just trying to see, you know, how how proficient we are in getting the, the correct answers. Okay. But if it's a worksheet, chances are you're going to want to show work. Is that all right? So yeah, I'm going to collect this tomorrow. Um, and then if there's any, uh, when class starts tomorrow, if there's any of these that you want to go over that was really confusing. Uh, we can discuss them then uh, as well. Yes? Uh, it depends on how far we get in class tomorrow. So my, I, I've got ideas. This is how I do things. I, I don't plan out very far ahead because I don't know how you guys are going to take that information. Does that make sense? If I plan out a week uh, of assignments and notes and stuff like that, uh, but we come across something that we really struggle on and i got to spend four days on it, now my entire schedule is messed up, right? So I wasted time making that schedule. So I, I'm i a one at most two day kind of plan ahead type thing. Uh, I've got a framework of, you know, how long I want to spend on things, but depends on how far we get tomorrow. Thirty-one. 